wonderful to see them, and we look forward to doing that again in the future. Um, but, but remembering uh, everyone who is still traveling uh, this holiday season, we ask for traveling mercies. A few prayer requests before we begin the service. Um, first, sad news to report. Bob Forrester, Connie Forrester's brother, Bomer, Connie Forrester's brother, got you. She got married. He didn't. Well, maybe he did, but he didn't change his name. Uh, passed away yesterday. He had been in a nursing home for several years. They had both been members of this church, and Connie had worshipped with us. Uh, so prayers for that family during this time of loss. Also, Susan's brother is heading to, or perhaps already in, um, Houston. He will be having some additional surgery on the 5th. Uh, prayers for healing hands among the doctors and the nurses. And just a prayer for all of that family as they go through that. I imagine surgery, and so prayers for all of them. Pray among God's people. Pray for the people of Thailand and pray for... <laughs> Uh, as well as the travel So we are glad and hope you have very safe travels in the, the days ahead. Are there other concerns? Yes. Just remember Brandon Diaz. Harold moves into hospice care. Thank you. Uh, yes, Brandy and her family as Harold is moving into hospice care uh, and in... Has he moved there or is he in the coming days? They're in the process and it's pretty sure. I mean, yeah. Very, yeah. In the, in the very, very quick future, um, that's where he'll be. I had a great visit to see Martin yesterday. She's herself and she's really physically healthy. And I can tell me the day she was there. So, our cards, there were stacks of cards from the church and all that. And also, our music. All right, all right, so we're going to move along, so try to keep up, okay? Any other prayer concerns this day? Then let us begin our worship in celebrating this, the Christmas season, through our service of lessons and carols. Join me in our responsive call to worship based on Isaiah Chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction in the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. First carol, the carol number 41, O come, all you faithful, please stand as you're able.
we'll be reading more from the book of Isaiah. Let us look at Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The word the wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, they shall graze their young, lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters over the sea. On that day, the word of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Will you join us in singing number 38? It came upon a midnight clear. And I will be pleased if you'll stand to sing this song. So some of these words are a little different from what you grew up seeing. So watch the words on the fourth verse. Let's sing it. reading is also from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. 
He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall open. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. A haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sigh shall flee away. Let's stand and sing number 40, Joy to the World.
third lesson is from Matthew chapter 1, 1 through 17. The names will not be familiar with you nor with me, but please abide with me. An account of genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zerah, Latimar and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Abram, and Abram the father of Aminabi, Aminabi the father of Hashem, Nashon the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, and Abijah, the father of Asa, and Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat, the father of Joam, and Joam, the father of Uzziah. And Messiah, the father of Johan, Jotham, and Jotham, the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz, the father of Hez, Hezekiah, and Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh, the father of Amos, and Amos, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Bekonah, and his father and his brothers, at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jehonah ah, was the father. This is where we go. Zalathia and Zalathia, the father of Zerubah, and Zerubabel, the father of Abiod, and Abiod, the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, and Zadok, the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Elod. Nearly the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathen, and Mathen the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Let's join together as we stand to sing hymn 48, Lo, how rose Eberlin.
Fourth lesson is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through, 20, through 38. In the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to, you, to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his king, kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy, he will be called Son of God, and now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month for, who, for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be possible with God. Then Mary, <clears throat> then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The stand is... Oh, we have an interlude. Fifth lesson is from Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. And his mother Mary had been engaged with Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband was Joseph. Being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her pub to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her time. <clears throat> but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear you a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people 
from their sins. All this place, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord to the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awake, awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. But he had no marital relationship with her until she had born a son, and he named him. Next hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number nine. Let us stand and sing together. sixth lesson comes from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 through 58. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. 
He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. Our next carol is O Holy Night, which is not in the hymnal, um, but you have it, you should have it on, on an insert. Is there anybody who doesn't? Okay, please stand as we sing.
next lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Our next carol is number 44, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Please stand, stand and let's sing together. Before I read our eighth lesson, I thought I would note two things. 
One, it didn't occur to me until we were halfway through the service that Sydney was intentional. I said, do I need to wear my mic today? And she said, oh, Dad, we're singing. No. And, and then I figured out why she said that. I kind of hurt my, no, just teasing. The second thing is, you don't know this today, but there has been a spirit at least looking over this building, if not haunting it. Uh, I would be remiss if not mentioning it. This week when I was preparing the bulletin, you might notice that, that there are some hymns where there's the asterisk that says, please stand, and there are other hymns where I intentionally didn't put an asterisk thinking y'all might be tired and, and would want to stay seated. When I did that, I was reminded of Willie Madden. She was a longtime Christian educator for the denomination, and we were privileged to know her when she worked at Thornwell. She mentored me for several years and was in our wedding as an adopted grandparent. During the wedding rehearsal, my dad was going through the service of events, and, and the organist would start to play, and, and everybody was sitting there, and that organ started to play, and Willie Madden was up out of her seat as quickly as possible. Looked at her. She was 173 at the time. She said, if the music's playing and you're able to, you stand up for him. That's just how we do it. And my dad said, amen. So we stood up for the hymns in there. Uh, Willie was in charge. So when uh, Willie must have been looking down and said, Clay, you got to have him stand up. So I appreciate you, you doing that today. Uh, Willie, you were right. Our next lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said, come, said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what all the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Our next hymn is hymn number 23, Angels We Have Heard on High. Let us stand and sing together.
may be seated. We continue in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, so not on Christmas Eve, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired to them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I too may go and pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went a star that they had seen at its rising, and until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Friends, we come now to the time of offering, reminding that God, out of God's abundance, has given us so much. Let us respond to God's generosity with our own abundant giving. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the many gifts of life that are ours. We give you thanks for the blessings of the year that has passed, and we give you thanks for the hope that we find in the new year to come. May we take all that you have given us, our lives, our resources, our times and talent, and use them towards the building of your kingdom. Oh God, you know there are many prayers among God's people this day, prayers for healing, prayers for those that mourn, prayers that remain silenced in our hearts. Oh God, hear our prayers. Hear the prayers of your people in this room and around the world. Help us to be about bringing healing and hope and comfort and peace to your creation. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 56, the first Noel. We will sing the first and third verses only. You may be seated. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as his father's only son, full of grace and truth. Amen. You stand as you are able for the benediction. As you leave this place, May you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed 
and love. From generation to generation, God has been on our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow, that God knows you by name. That God loves you and calls you forth, saying, go, be the person you are called to be. Love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.